All right, folks, let's see if this all works. Pray. Pray. Here we go. Nobody has seen a one before, nobody has produced one, nobody knows if it is just a beautiful mask, but without a physical reality. ER, Einstein and Rosen, they pointed out that solutions to general relativity allowed for two black holes, which are connected, but with a kind of bridge, what we call a wormhole. But that wormhole has the property of being non-traversable. Wormhole is a very unstable passage. It opens and it closes and it gets chaotic and it gets destroyed very fast. EPR is about quantum entanglement and what Einstein called spooky action at a distance, something he was not happy with. Entanglement is this property, the subatomic particles, they are partners. Even if you take them apart, you take them at the other edge of the universe, they hold information that if you measure the one, you know what the other would be. So entanglement is a strong correlation. What the attackers showed was that if you introduce what's known as a negative energy shock wave, you can support your wormhole and get something from one end and have it come out the other. And so in the quantum computer, we can directly send a qubit from one side of the wormhole and watch it come out the other. If you take the physical system that theoretical physicists say, this is a wormhole, and you work out pencil and paper, so how good of a quantum computer do I need? You get an answer that's like a quantum computer 10 years from now. It, it looks hopeless. But we thought, let's try. So we are here in our GQ2 lab, and then the controlled signals actually are produced in these racks sitting next to the cryostat. When you try to just run a wormhole as the theorists have prepared it on a quantum computer, you find that you need to implement this very large system. So that's big. That's a big fight problem. I cannot put it on an experiment. And so what we have to do is we have to do what physicists call coarse braining. So you want to preserve certain features, in this case gravitational features, while throwing away all the unnecessary components. We knew we needed to get to a smaller system size, and so we were kind of banging our head against it for a year or something. And then finally you, you come up with a, a weird idea that, that might work. The idea of, of rewriting as a neural network is something that's kind of out there, and that's like it's it's a weird idea because you usually don't think of physical wormholes as neural networks. The wormhole itself that has like these many parameters that we treat as neural network weights. We then have a, a data set that we're going to train on, which is the dynamics that we want to observe that correspond to wormhole. So
a neural network, your eye. Your eye is the neural network that allows it to open. Your eye is the neural network. Now I'm going to pause this. This is the way the Lord communicated this to me. He made sure that I understood because I've had enough physics and enough, um, enough science in my life to understand what these guys are talking about. They're saying they couldn't, using just the theory and the mathematics of a wormhole, make it work and have an experiment to do it. But if they rewrote it as a neural network and then they drew an eye, so do you understand? So they rewrote it as a neural network and it worked. That's why I'm showing you Tim Allen going through a, uh, like a dimension, like into, think of it as us going into heaven because when you look up, you're already connected because your eyes have been made one in Christ. Do you understand? This cannot traverse the wormhole. This that's been made one can go up into the one that it belongs to. This is subject to the other one that's down or you don't go anywhere because when this surge of negative imagery, uh, energy and in, in the last video, I was saying imagery and energy. It's both. This surge of negative energy comes up. Well, the imagery is coming through the eyes. You understand because the wormhole or the, the attachment to the pit is an eye. It is a trough. I've been saying that for a year now. Your eye is a, di a dimensional trough. Let's call that trough a wormhole. So that trough goes to the pit and then because you're connected to the pit with your own locust, Satan's the king of all the locusts. So he sees through every single eye that's connected with one eye down. That's why if your eye be single, your whole body's full of light. Now you understand because light is up, dark is down. It's the most obvious thing in the world now. And so when you've been converted and your eyes are one in Christ, when that surge of negative energy comes and all those eyes open up on the earth that are still attached to that surge of negative energy and they, all these eyes are opening up on the whole planet that belong to that dimensional trough, do you get it? Then... This one that's been converted, it stabilizes the exit, the door out of here. Do you understand? So that's why we wait on the Lord. <laughs> it's insane. Okay, let's get back to it. So let me play that for you one more time. Give you. A, so here you go. Here's a representation of your, your eye, your, the dimensional trough to heaven opening up. So you're looking up. Okay, you're now, your eyes have been made single, so you're leaving the earth. You're leaving through the dimension. You're, you're able to traverse the wormhole. You're able to go through it. You're going through it now. And now I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am you may also be. And there you are. Your consciousness, what do you know? I want to ask you, what do you get? As a joint heir of Christ, you get a, a restored body, don't you? You get a glorified body. Jesus came out of the grave with a glorified body. Do you think it was an accident that he walked out of a tomb that had a round stone in front of it, like an eye, and then the eye, the stone rolls back and light comes in? I mean, light comes out of the darkness. Do you get it? The, he's the light in there, and he comes out of the darkness? I mean... <laughs> it's I have that picture in the show notes. Okay, now. Um, an experiment. And so what we have to do is we have to do what physicists call coarse braiding. So you want to preserve certain features, in this case gravitational features, while throwing away all the unnecessary components. We knew we needed to get to a smaller system size, and so we were kind of banging our head against it for a year or something. And then finally you, you come up with a, a weird idea that, that might work. The idea of, of rewriting it as a neural network is something that's kind of out there, and that's like it's it's a weird idea because you usually don't think of physical wormholes as neural networks. The wormhole itself that has like these many parameters that we treat as neural network weights. We then have a, a data set that we're going to train on, which is the dynamics that we want to observe that correspond to wormhole. So it sounds like a generic machine learning problem now, and we can just like plug it straight into the machine learning toolbox.
I proposed the, the idea and tried it out. The original system has 210 terms. That was the, the kind of first moment where like, it might be possible, you know? <laughs> this whole this whole wormhole thing we've been talking about for two years, like, maybe we can actually do it. And the first moment where like, it might be possible, you know? <laughs> this whole straight into the machine learning toolbox. I proposed the, the idea and tried it out. The original system has 210 terms. Well, let me just ask you a question. Does that remind you of anything? Maybe like the the eye that's the very top of the Vatican, the crown. It's got 32 eight-pointed stars. 32 means angel in the Bible, the eye of the angel. Does it remind you of the night under the stars where the Lord said, I will prove to Jonathan that your eye goes to a star. I will show up. And he showed up as a eye in the sky with an iris that was green blue and pink like a rainbow eye in the sky what about the fountain in front of my house i mean that he showed me your eye is a fountain of life it makes an eye do you understand it's one is energy that comes in what it's good one is one is light one is dark one gives, one receives. Does it remind you of the top of the Vatican? There's the top of the Vatican. Look, everything I've been telling you, look at this. There's the eye at the top of the Vatican. Here is the canopy that blocks one eye from the other eye. The canopy, see, with the dove hidden in the middle? Do you understand that the dove on the inside of the canopy represents the Holy Spirit trapped with inside the host body? The, the canopy equals the host body. So the dove underneath, is trapped within the host body but what goes down to it the eye underneath it so watch so right here is the eye on the ceiling and that's the eye of the angel and it's blocked from the canopy see the canopy and the, the holy spirit is trapped in the canopy and then what's under the canopy the the eye of the serpent so let's go to that right now here you go unbelievable there you go look at that there it is so here's the floor right here. Here's the floor in the Vatican. It's an eye, but it's a serpent's eye. Right here is the serpent's eye underneath the canopy. The canopy is blocking the other eye on the ceiling, representing the eye of the angel that's trapped within the system because he's trapped within the canopy, which is Lucifer is the anointed cherub that covereth. The word covereth is canopy. <laughs> freak the heck out you guys and now here we go here is this guy using physics to to absolutely reinforce and confirm the lord is using this video he gave it to me to confirm and understand that everything i've shown you is correct do you understand what you're looking at mind-blowing this is the short version of the video i did the other day because I just wanted to get to the data points. Here we go, let's keep going. Here's the eye, so here's the neural network. They rewrote the physics as a neural network so it would work. That means like your eye. Now look at this lady standing at this pond in front of two halves of a rock sticking out of the water. Let me explain something to you. That is the Lord communicating to his servant. You got it right, Johnny. Two halves of the same rock. And right after they talk, right after they cut away from this scene, listen to what they say. We thought about rewriting the whole thing as a neural network, and they cut away from two halves of a, of, of a rock, you know, two halves sticking out of the water? <laughs> That's not even possible. Okay, here we go. Ready? Pay attention. We knew we needed to just launch some stuff, and so we were kind of banging our head against it for a year or something. And then finally, you come up with a weird idea that might work. The idea of, of rewriting as a neural network is something that's kind of out there. You know, it's, like it's, it's a weird idea because you usually don't think of physical wormholes as neural networks. The wormhole itself that has like this many parameters that picture as neural network weights. We then have a, a data set that we're going to turn on, which is the dynamics that we want to observe that correspond to the wormhole. So it sounds like a generic machine learning problem now, and we can just like plug it straight into the machine learning toolbox. I proposed the, the idea and tried it out. The original system has 210 terms. That was the, the kind of first moment where like, it might be possible, you know? <laughs> this whole, this whole wormhole thing we've been talking about for two years, like, 
We're looking for a peak, that's the qubit making it through the wormhole. I'm watching the data as it comes out. There's a little bit of a, a noisy peak. At first I was, I was like, this is probably just noise artifact, but as the data kept coming and the, the peak kept getting clearer, it was like, a, this, is, this is a wormhole, I think I just saw one. <laughs> so I was like sending it off to Marie and the others, like, uh, I think we have a wormhole, guys. He said it's there. I said not even he's there. It was nuts. It was nuts. What happens is the qubits of the Google quantum computer are making a little bit of extra space, and that's our wormhole. A pulse of negative energy falls into the wormhole. Now the wormhole becomes traversable. It opens. You put a qubit through one side of the wormhole. The qubit is now in the interior of this wormhole. That information actually spread over the entire quantum system. This spread of quantum information... It becomes shared by many particles in the form of quantum entanglement. And then, rather remarkably, it has to refocus on a single qubit. And then, as the wormhole is it's closing, the qubit is exiting. You are ready to go, the door opens up. You are ready, you're made one, the door opens, you're able to traverse it, your your consciousness, your being is able to leave. I've gone to prepare a place for you, and then you're somewhere else instantly. Okay. Remember the night under the stars? That's what it was all about understanding that you are one of the stars you are from the father of lights and whom there is no variableness of shadow turning right here in the container that's the bride there is the the heartbeat of life that represents your essence your energy your life and it's a giant circle here's the back door right here see the back door this is the back door during the get together at the night under the stars the Lord told me, open that back door and put everybody's doves coming out the back door that had an exit sign that was upside down. No one could even think this up. I didn't put the exit sign there upside down. The electrician installed it incorrectly. That's the Lord God. Keep watching. Those lights represent us. There's the tidal wave slamming New York. Now look, so it, there's a, that represents in the judgment seat of Christ. It shows a wormhole going from one side to the other. So you go in this side, you come out on the other side as a set of twins. Let me show you just how insane that is. It's right here. It's exactly the same imagery. It's exactly the same imagery as a wormhole. And it's in the show note folder, but just go to go to a folder of wormholes and you'll see it it's exactly what's in it's exactly what's in the judgment seat because see we went from one side to the other and came out as a set of twins and that's why we have to be reconciled back to god because when we came into this dimension we we became we got a new master satan is the master of the flesh and so you are there's a right side up you your one eye goes to heaven, the other eye goes down to the pit. That's why I wanted you to see David and Goliath, because see, David was God's uh, guy, and David's connected to the Lord God. So think of the Lord using his servant to use a slingshot, which makes an eye, the, the circumferences of a slingshot, and the tether going out and the wrist moving, makes an eye. And the rock shooting out of the eye is what kills the other race. And I'm the rock guy. I always tell Corey and Zach, I'm like, guy, can you imagine 
that the Lord's like literally got me going up against the angel of the bottomless pit because the truth is what kills the lie. And the only way for you to get set free is you'll know the truth and the truth will set you Eleuthero. What do you think the odds were as with Eleuthera, the feminine form of Eleuthero? And it means licentious freedom. I was with Eleuthera the night I got saved. And when I walked out into that alley, when I came down those stairs and I prayed, I looked over and there Adam was in the Garden of Eden. Really? <laughs> okay. Yeah, that's like one in a hundred gazillion. Okay, here we go. Let's finish this off. Ready? There, and the, there's the, the judgment seat. It shows a wormhole going in one side, coming out on the other side is a set of twins. And then on the other wall, it shows the reconciliation and the grave is open and Jesus saved us by coming into the flesh dimension to get us the heck out of here. Unbelievable. I'm going to pause it there. So right here, you see right here, there's the entrance to the dimension we came into. One from above, one from below. And then you come in over here on this wall right here is a set of twins. And over here is the empty grave with the doves coming out, and then the crosses, the three crosses at Calvary, showing our reconciliation back to the Father. There it is, going, coming into the dimension we call the flesh, right there. Here, here it is coming out into the dimension we call the flesh. Here's a set of twins. Here, this one's got horns. See the horns right there? These are two babies. There's one upside down. There's one right side up. This is the twin system that we got trapped in. There it is. Let me show you. And let me show you. Take a look at this for one moment. Look at this. Going in one side, then coming out on the other side is a set of twins. Okay, so right here in the show notes, look. So here's the container from the night under the stars. You go on one side right here, and then you come out on the other side as a, as a set of twins. And let me just show you how perfect that is right here. Look at this. This is, this is the show note folder, guys, right here. Look. There it is. There it is. This is it. I mean, this is the dragon. This is the whole deal. The, so the Lord has obviously communicated very clearly the understanding of all this to the person that is currently speaking to you right now. There's the data. All the data is right there. Go go take the folders. Go watch every single video and special projects too in this folder right here. Watch. Go watch every one of these videos and this folder is called New Images Shadow of Turning because the Lord literally let me catch. Watch. There's the Prince of Darkness. There he is. There's his eye, nose, open mouth, fang, fang, open mouth right here, eye right there, eye right there, horn right there. And he's at the bottom of the list of popes right here. The Lord let me catch it. And I was I was raised in a Catholic family that I knew I just didn't belong to. I was like, that's so weird. I don't I don't belong in this family for some reason. It's just not right. There's the Prince of Darkness right here at the bottom, and it's a human in a slave collar, and it turns into a locust from the pit. Okay, you can rest assured that the person speaking to you, the Lord God used to solve the riddle of humanity and everything that has to do with humanity. Your essence, who are you? Where'd you come from? Why are you here? You're here as a penalty. You revolted against the Most High God and you got a host body. It's your prison suit. Satan is the owner of the host body system. Once you get a host body, he controls you. You're in a system where it's right side up, upside down, and the, the, demon that goes to the pit goes to a worm that's that's your personal worm that controls you your whole life you do things that are evil and you get a record against you that's held down in the pit however when you look up and you uh, you confess your sins you get converted you get turned up your eyes become single your whole body's full of light and you're ready to go when the surge of energy comes from the pit and it's and that that dimension comes into this dimension we call the earth and you've been converted and you're made ready you're own personal exit is ready to go. And there it is. Perfect. That's it. Told you. Here we go. Let's go. 
Let's keep going. There's no way I could have gotten all this right beforehand. No way. I'm going to pause it right here. Let me show you what's going on. So this is the back door to the shipping container that's the Bride of Christ. Well, the Lord told me for this get-together that I was to make a silhouette, like a shadow of Christ. And his crown of thorns has turned into doves leaving. Because, see, that torture that he went through, his payoff is you and me. For the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross. What joy? Getting his children back, because I'm a dad, and I've been through it for 20 years. The Lord told me, for what you're going to do for me, I'm going to take care of four for you, and I have four children. And he promised me that. That was my guarantee, like Noah. Noah, hey, you need to get this ark ready, and don't worry. The end of all things is coming, but I've got you covered. Trust me. That's what he told me the night I got saved. Trust me. I'll get four to safety for what you do for me. Just saying, that was my deal. Now, here all the doves are leaving out the back door. This door has an upside-down exit side inside of the container. Think about that. That represents the bride of Christ. An upside-down exit sign inside with the heartbeat of life right next to the back door going through a wormhole. <laughs> yeah, it's okay. No big deal. <laughs> I'm so far for you. So far for you. And just like Okay, so, and there it is. There's a representation of the back door opening. Here's a representation of what the whole thing looks like. Here's uh, the exit opening, your essence leaving, and it's through your eye. And it, don't worry, if someone's physically blind, it doesn't matter. You've been converted, and you know you're converted, you're leaving too. I remember the Lord told me for someone to, ex I whispered into someone's ear, and I said, when you least expect it, you'll know. There, there you go. Does that look like someone traversed that, that cubit traversing a wormhole that we just saw? It? Now it turns into the pupil of his eye. That is, by, by the way, if you're paying attention, what that guy said in the physics lecture was, he said, by rewriting it as a neural network, we were able to do it. Your eye. If your eye be single, your whole body's full of light. So when the door to the light opens up, you can go into it. If you have light and dark, when the pit opens up, you're you're going to have to stay here and deal with what's going on. Doesn't mean you won't be able to make it back home, but it's going to be a scary situation, I guarantee it. You're going to have to be able to go to your death like I'm saying, you know what, go ahead and kill me because I'm not going to renounce Christ. Because that's what they'll try and do. And here's the other thing. Here's here's one same thing I've seen before, just for the record. I've seen a bunch of Islamic jihadists take people, and and I saw that I saw this 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 was a video. You can't watch it on YouTube, but they were taking people. They would have them renounce Christ. The second they renounced Christ, they shot him in the head. So there's no going back. They would say renounce Christ, renounce the Holy Spirit. And then as soon as they did, bam. So the last thing they did was renounce Christ. Don't ever do it. Say, you know what? Piss off. There you go. All right, now let's finish this little thing. Now, watch this. Now, I want to show you this because there's a tidal wave. There's a tsunami that's printed on the U.S. currency. Now, here's James chapter 1, verse 17. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and cometh down from the Father of lights. He's our Father. Now, look at the word lights. It says to shine and to make manifest. Okay, that's what I do. I make manifest what is hidden right in front of your face. The Vatican is a snake. The largest altar in the world is a dead sheep. The list of popes is a guy in a slave collar. The, the collar is a beast. Uh, the guy's whole face and everything above it turns into the prince of darkness. You turn it upside down. It's a locust from the pit. It is all perfect according to the word of God. 
because in the pit there's locusts. The Prince of Darkness is the, he's the king of all the locusts. So he's on the image. There's a human in a slave collar representing us. We're all in slave collars. That's what your host body is. It's your slave collar. It's the beast system. And when you turn it upside down, it's a locust from the pit. Because those who try and hide their plans, which is destroying angels, they turn everything upside down. End of story. Isaiah 29, 15, and 16. Done. Okay, now, here it is. Our Father is the Father of lights, in whom there is no variableness. Look at the word variableness, transmutation, or phase of orbit. You know what that means? No phase of orbit, no transmutation. There is no transmutation or phase of orbit in him, neither any shadow of turning, and of his own will begat us with the word of truth. So he birthed us with the word of truth. Now watch this, that we should be the first fruits of his creatures. Look at this. Look at the word begat. Watch there. Ready? See it? 616. Ready? To breed forth by transformation to bring forth, to generate. Now look at the root of it. It means a billow as a bursting or toppling wave. Now, let me ask you this question. Is it even remotely possible? The person speaking to you is the person the Lord God showed all the bombings, on the U.S. currency, the bombings that were going to happen, that are about to happen, and he sent me to the FBI to show the FBI the $10 bill, which is a, a tidal wave covering a seven-story building, and the new $100 bill, which is a nuke taking out all of New York. Is it possible that the word begat, birthing, means birthing, and it means a toppling, uh, billowing, toppling wave? And I'm the guy showing you the wave on the $10 bill and the $100 bill. That sounds like the event when it happens. That sounds like when the door opens to me, doesn't it? And you know that we keep seeing on the news that Russia has a, a you know, a, a torpedo that's going to take out the East Coast with the tsunami. They've been plugging that for a long time now to front load everybody to get in their head. Well, the birthing of that new nation that I was talking about, look, right here in James is talking about the birthing of his children right here, of his own will begat us, birth us. Okay, it means a billowing, toppling wave. That's what the word begat means. To swell with young. That is to bend, curve, a billow as a bursting or toppling wave. Right there, he birthed us with the word of truth, that we should be the first fruits of his creatures. Now watch this. Ready? Now I'm just going to show you in the Justin Messenger series right here. Watch. When I prophesied it right here, I showed you guys. Here it is. He Shot from fire and smoke and a devouring wind. I want you to look at this image right now. First of all, I made a pyramid out of the bill. And now Isaiah said, those who try and hide their plans turn everything upside down. Sorry. And so now I turned the pyramid upside down. Now I'm going to take that same image and put it here. And what you're looking at is a nuclear explosion coming out of the ocean. Time and Newsweek magazine have said, well, I'm sure Newsweek, I've heard Time has, but I'm sure Newsweek has. They came out with a cover story that said there's going to be an offshore nuclear attack on a port city here in the U.S. That was in 2007, they said that. 2008, I'm sorry. Yes, the terrorists would put a nuclear device in the ocean, they would detonate it, and that would create a massive tidal wave. You're looking at it on the $10 bill. Here's the tidal wave coming over the building right here. Here's a representation of the nuclear blast. Okay, now I'm going to pause that. Now let's go to... Seven years later, after what you just saw, seven years later, after what you just saw, the new $100 bill came out. That's when the Lord told me, go to the FBI and show it to them. I did not want to go. I wasn't excited at all. I figured I might be disappeared right then and there. That might be my last trip. But again, I was willing to go. I was willing. Here you go. Here, Here's the new $100 bill. And it had come out. And the Lord said, now you're going to the FBI and you're going to show them the prophetic utterance and you're gonna show them what I showed you. Here it is. City, and you're gonna see the water coming through now after this. Here are the buildings, here are the buildings right here. See the buildings right here? Okay, you see all this um, ink right here that makes the unidirectional lines? There's darker ink in certain spots, you'll see it. Okay, these unidirectional lines is movement towards the subject, which is us. As I, as I change the magnification, you're gonna see all of this all of this is going to turn to waves coming in from those nukes that went down, and they're going to be destroying the city. Watch. There it goes. There it is. See it? 
See how it changed? See how it gets all fluffy? Boom. There it is. Building's being wiped out. There it is. So out of the sea shall come fire and smoke and a devouring wind. Water as high as the walls of Jerusalem will cover the city by the sea. I, that was the prophetic utterance in 2007. Here it is on your $100 bill and your $10 bill. No arguing it. See the water? That's water. I'm going to go back. Look. There it is. Now picture the water coming at you. Boom. Okay, so there it is. Now ready back to James when it all goes down. And of his own will he begat he us with the word of truth. The word of truth. Aletheia. But look at this. He begat us to bring forth. See, bring forth as a billowing, toppling wave. To bring forth. A billow as a bursting or toppling wave. Let me show you the very last words of the Justin Messenger uh the just a messenger of prophetic utterance watch that here you go let's see if i can get subtitles here we go here you go ready it puts forth its leaves and suddenly the time is upon you the travail begins and a holy nation is to be born and it will not stop until that nation is brought forth I'm going to pause it right there. What are the what are the very last words of the prophetic utterance? It will not stop until that nation, that holy nation, is brought forth. Let's go to James. Begat. Right here. Begat. What does that say right there? What does that say right there? To begat. To bring forth. There it is. Okay. This is the short condensed version of me freaking out yesterday. But I, I, I suffer from uh, pe knowing that people will show up here and they haven't been at this ministry. They don't know what's going on. So I felt compelled yesterday just to go over all this other data to kind of blend it all in. And it took me an hour to get to this information that you're looking at right now. Here it all is condensed. I love you in Christ. Peace and grace, guys. I'm just like, oh, uh, yay, the burden is off. Y'all have any idea how heavy this burden is? It's insane. It's like, argh. Okay. His purpose was to make one new man from the two. Now, I have some shofar blowing to do right now. Um, this is you. This is Johnny. I love you in Christ. There's a kiss. Uh, let me uh, let me pull out some shofars I got. Thank you. Okay, so it's shofar time, guys. Okay, I'm kind of winging this. I'm not going to do like shofar practice. I'm going to pop the cork here. They come with these nifty little corks on them. Okay, so here we go. And just give me a moment. Every shofar is a little different. <laughs> Now, this is a really cool thing. This was a set of shofars. That means it probably came off the same animal. It looks like it did. And thank you, Lord. Now, let's see this one. Ready? Wow. Cool. The king's coming. Now, check this one out. This is like, this is like a straight. Okay, here we go. Guys, the king's coming, man. Y'all know it, right? I mean, after watching this video, can y'all even try and wrap your brain around? For those of y'all that have been here, think about this. Chinati, right? The Lord takes me to the desert. He's like, we're going to meet in Chinati. And I'm like, we're going to meet in Chinati. That means, uh, <laughs> that means Johnny's probably going to die in the desert. <laughs> and I was like, okay, well, let's do it. So I thought for sure I was going to go die in the desert, but I was willing to go. 
my close friends knew that I probably wouldn't be coming back. I was just like, well, how do you meet the Lord without dying? Because he gave me two halves of the same rock. Do you get it? And he showed me what the equation was for understanding the entire world in a physical representation. Not only did he give me two halves of the same rock and have me put them together, he put me in a Garden of Eden setting with 1937 written in the concrete that my building was set down on. 1937 means lust and desire. And he had a big whip tail lizard going around my, my uh, little building that was split in half and was picked up off the ground and set back down on a rock foundation. And then he made sure my LZ was split in half. <laughs> it's just like, okay, whatever. <clears throat> anyway, here we go. Now that's pretty cool. And there's another one. This is also a set. Isn't that crazy? Okay. Here we go. The king's coming. I guarantee it the king's coming. There's no question of whether or not he's coming. Did y'all see what you just saw in a video? Go do what I do. Go through every single picture in that folder. Watch every single video once or twice. And then try and wrap your brain around. Because when I come do a video here, do y'all know the kind of data that I've already gone through before I do a video? I'm overloaded. I'm like, <laughs> how do I show this to everybody? <laughs> okay, here we go. Next, Chopar. <laughs> I can honestly say I'm a shofar blower now. <laughs> I can blow shofars right out of the gate. I'm pretty good. All right. Thank you so much for the shofars. And I'll be blowing these. I'm going to grab my whole thing of shofars. And I'm going to do a video where I just blow every single shofar. <laughs> it's like uh, we're going to have a shofar blowing uh, video. All right. I love you guys in Christ. Let's go back to the hug. I hope you guys have an awesome day. This is you. This is Johnny. I love you guys. It's going to be okay. It's all about faith, guys. No matter what it looks like, keep the faith. Never deny Christ, ever. Um, I'll give you a link to a video where y'all can, if anyone wants to see an example you know, maybe I'll pull one up, but man, I'm telling you, when they get you to deny Christ, the very next thing is you're dead instantly. So don't ever think about it. Okay, here we go. Love you in Christ, guys. <laughs>